Yes, my name is Eric Sanders of the Sands Firm PC, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the NYPD disciplinary process. Now, for those who are members of the NYPD and for members who are not members of the NYPD, this can be helpful to you. The NYPD has one of the most complex disciplinary processes in probably in the city of New York. Uh, they even have it their own courtroom. And I'm going to tell you how it works. Generally, a police officer, and I'm going to talk about police officers, those are the ones that mostly the public are interested in. Um, police officers can be disciplined in several ways. You can get what's called a verbal reprimand, um, or warn and admonish, or you can get something that's called a command discipline. A command discipline can come in three stages. You can have a Schedule A for minor violations, a Schedule B for more severe violations, and you have a Schedule C or what's known as charging specifications. Let's take them all in, in turn. A command discipline, Schedule A, the subject or the person that's being disciplined can be subjected to penalties from a warning admonish to all the way up to a five days vacation loss. A person who's a subject of command B discipline can have, you know, more than five days and they can have other penalties such as a warning admonish or maybe even 10 days taken or more importantly you can have this information placed on your central personnel index. Now for the most severe version you get what's called charging specifications. Charging specifications can happen a couple ways. It can happen as a result of an investigation where you receive formal charging specifications or you receive three command disciplines such as three Schedule A command disciplines within a six month period or there could be in other circumstances where they determine that this uh, penalty or potential penalty or, or the alleged misconduct doesn't warrant a Schedule A or B and it therefore should go to formal charter specification. Now if you receive formal charter and specification, remember you have a right to counsel, then a person can appear in court on your behalf in the NYPD trial room. As a general rule, police officers are going to be tried in the trial room, although there is some case law suggest, uh, suggests, and there is a memorandum of understanding since they are city employees, they technically can go also to the oath court. And the oath court is the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. But as a general rule, it's going to be held in the trial room. And what happens is in the trial room, you get to call evidence. I mean, you get to call witnesses. You get to have evidence. The hearsay rules is not as formal. And, and some would suggest that it's, it's not a real court, but it is a court. It is a court under the laws of the state of New York. And what will happen is, you have a hearing, you can call witnesses, you have a prosecution which calls department advocate, and then you also have the police officer who's called respondent. You both exchange information, you have discovery, you have open discovery, and then you have what's called a trial in front of an administrative judge. In this case, they're not really administrative judges, they're really assistant commissioners who are hearing cases on behalf of the police commissioner. And since they don't have administrative powers, other than what's through the police commissioner, they can hear hearings or hear a trial, and then they can make a rec what's called a recommendation, a report and recommendation. They make a report and recommendation, and then the police commissioner can either accept it, reject it, or he can accept it, reduce the penalty, reject the penalty, or he can reject it, he or she can reject it outright. So as a recap, remember, there's a formal disciplinary process in place and it can end up where you receive charging specifications and wind up in the trial room. And remember, the trial room is located at One Police Plaza and it's open to the public. So if there's any questions, you know, feel free to call and ask. Um, that's another helpful legal tip from the Sands Firm PC. Thank you.